And here we go. So I have a Reedy SP5. This is a 215. Uh, I like 215. It's it's a uh, good motor to run in TC. Uh, but this one here is a different construction than the S Plus. Uh, I prefer the front of this one. The S Plus has uh, five mounting points, but the, every other one, so the even ones, they're sort of cut out, so they're just floating. To be honest, motors don't weigh that much, and it's on touring cars, so I don't think it's going to flex much. If it were off-road, maybe it'd be a bigger deal, uh, because you could get some flex and then put some stress on the bearings, but again, they don't weigh much, so maybe not. Although, taking jumps, uh, that might make a difference. Uh, so I think this one, I like the construction of this one, uh, to be honest, but the, the end bell, man, the end bell is tough to rotate initially so if I keep the driver it's easy to rotate if I use my hand it's hard to rotate so if, if you slightly I don't want to necessarily to say twist but if you shift it a little it sort of gets stuck and it's easier to turn it with the driver which is the problem because if you can turn it with the driver when uh, tightening up the end bell again at the correct timing you have to hold it firmly with your other thumb or else it's going to shift the end bell, and then you're, you're not going to get the timing that you want it to get, or you're not going to hit that timing mark uh, that you wanted. So, so that's one of my gripes with this motor, but it is uh, one of those uh, three-piece constructions, uh, which is uh, it's, it's pretty nice. Just uh, one of the things to note with all of these motors, and it doesn't matter if it's the Hobby Wing G4 or the Trinity slot machine, uh, any of these motors with that three-piece, you know, the much more, uh, what is it, Feta V3, uh, just be careful not to over-tighten those long screws that hold everything together. Uh, so that's something that you have to keep in mind or torque them evenly, uh, really. So so those are some of the, the things I would uh, just make sure to do correctly. Now... This motor, uh, the KVs, it'll be interesting to compare it side to side with the other Reedy with the S Plus. And the reason why is at 4 point amps, well approximately 4 point amps, the Reedy S Plus, uh, that one does approximately 2,750 KV. Uh, this one right here, uh, if you're looking at the KV, it's 2,363. Uh, so these are uh, two motors that are about 400 kV apart, uh, roughly, uh, yeah, roughly, uh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's quite a lot of kVs. Now, don't be discouraged between one motor or the other. The question is, what is the purpose or use between uh, the two motors? Keep in mind that the other motor that I previously tested, which is the S+, Plus, that one's a revving motor. That one is made for high revs, uh, so one is going to have to gear accordingly. And that is something very important to keep in mind. Uh, now, the timing on the other one really, really jumps. So, for example, well, not the timing, the amps. So going from 45 degrees to 47 average on the S+, Plus, uh, that's a jump from 3.9 amps to 5.3 versus this one, uh, this one's a little different, and you're going to be able to tell, because just by testing on it and seeing the numbers, these two have different motors, sorry, different rotors. So the rotor gauss is going to be different between the two because they're gonna have different purposes. This one is lower KV, uh, but if you look at the amps uh, compared to the other one, uh, and then at the timing, this one, must have a stronger rotor, which means this one's going to be their torque version. And that's something that happens with motors. It's not necessarily, for example, that the Reedy S Plus is better than the SP5 or that the SP5 is better than the S Plus. It's just going to depend on your application. Uh, do you want to torque your motor and then you can adjust the gearing, start gearing up? Or do you want a rev motor where you adjust the gearing and then you adjust downwards? Uh, that's going to play a role. I've never done 
a test to look at Amtra uh, between one motor or the other. And uh, to be honest, there's just so many variables when it comes to electric motors. That's one of the reasons why electric motors usually do not have a power rating or anything because you can change timing, gearing, everything. Here we have the rotor off of the Reedy. So we have uh, this one here and the balancing is drilled out. So we've seen some of these rotors, uh, some of these rotors before, but I would have to look back in the images since I don't take notes of what the rotors look like. Uh, but one of the things that I like about this Reedy is that little washer, I forget what these are called, uh, but it's not perfectly flat. So it's supposed to touch and just create enough pressure to maintain a balance. Uh, well, uh, balance as in distribution. And the rear shim, uh, so this is what they use for the rear shims instead of multiple little washers. Uh, I've never tried the balancing, but this should be very nice for balancing. Uh, now over here, on top of this shim, there's this, you, you do have some of these other regular shims for the spacing. Uh, but anyway, I do like this. Uh, so here we go. Everything is zeroed out. And it's, it's good strength. It's not the highest, not the lowest, but it's actually pretty good. Uh, I would say the closer to 1700, the better. And this one has it, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and compare it to, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the data table. Here are the uh, rotors that I've tested so far, but the focus is going to be this Reedy SP5. So Reedy SP5, uh, very nice Gauss. Uh, we're looking at 1667, 1672. So uh, earlier I was talking about the Reedy S, which is a very nice rev, rev motor, but uh, it's very easy easy to see uh, one of the main differences. Now, uh, to be honest, uh, a rotor swap would say a lot, but uh, that's not really the interest here. Uh, it's really to see out of the box what one gets out of the box. Uh, but one could potentially swap rotors and you know get different numbers. Uh, but the way they come out of the box, the construction of the Reedy SP5 is quite nice, uh, very nice, I, I would say, except for the end bell. That end bell is such a pain. Uh, I mean, many end bells are pain. Trinity end bells are pain as well. Uh, but this one is a special case. Uh, here we go. So, as far as Gauss, Gauss is. Uh, it's pretty good for for the motor. And looking at the specs, we have them right here. So this one, uh, the only reason why I have more entries is because I was trying to get that 5. Uh, that's the reason why. I always try to shoot for the 5. So this is close enough for the 5. Uh, this one, to be honest, uh, you're going to overheat the motor. Well, you can always gear down even more, but it's just the amp draw is so high. I don't really see but uh, maybe some of you run really high timing uh, for on a race and uh, that works as well now when I say really high timing I'm talking about blinky ESC and then really high timing on the motor uh, but I don't know that's a possibility maybe you prefer higher timing gearing uh, please comment below if you do I mean that would be very useful maybe I'll consider it uh, a little more uh, but I think timing in the, well, uh, these are kind of in the right timing. But yeah, close to 45 is generally a good, uh, good timing range. And this one is great, uh, 46, 5. So that's actually re really good. So th this is something that I like about this one. Uh, now KV, we're looking at 2477. So say 2500. Uh, but let's see, this is a five. Uh, so here, here we go. So if we compare it to the other Reedy, the S Plus right here, uh, we can see that there is almost, that's almost a 500 kV difference uh, between the two. So the Reedy S Plus is definitely a rev motor. The SP5 is definitely their torque version uh, compared to these. But uh, let's look at the SP5 compared to, let's see, Hobby Wing and Helix. Those were... So the S Plus was higher revving than those motors as well. But this one is probably to compete with the G4 and the Helix and the slot machine. So let's go ahead uh, and look at that. 
Uh, let's see, 5.5, here we go. Uh, all right, so the Helix, the Helix actually does more KV, but it's higher timing. So those are some of the things to consider when getting a motor. Uh, I do prefer lower timing, uh, but then again, high KV is also really nice. So chances are, if you get the SP5, you're probably going to be able to get away with gearing a little higher. If you get the Helix, you're probably going to have to gear a little lower. Uh, still, both of them should be able to perform uh, great, I would say. Uh, the Helix is definitely a very nice motor. Uh, if we look at the Hobby Wing, I don't have a 5. Uh, let's see, but I do have a 4 on this one. Uh, so 23, 63 at 47, sorry, 43, uh, so 23, and here's a 4. Uh, so the Hobby Wing has more KV, but uh, higher degrees of timing. Uh, so now I'm wondering, well, this one has more KV too. Oh, this one's really nice, Surpass. Uh, but now I'm curious, well... Uh, let me go back to the Gauss. I'm curious what the Gauss is compared to the other ones. G4. All right, it's about the same Gauss. So G4 and the Reedy have about the same Gauss. Uh, what about the Helix? Here we go. Helix 21.5. Oh, Helix definitely has more Gauss. Oh, that's interesting. Higher KV and more Gauss. Uh, so it's probably the, the can. There's something different in the can design. Uh, but like I said, the... Here we go. Uh, the Reedy is a very nice motor, but if you're debating between these two, so the Reedy S Plus and the Reedy SP5, it's going to depend on what you're looking for. You're looking for something with more torque, or are you looking for something with more revs? And that's ultimately going to be what's going to um, determine which one will be best for your application. Uh, well, that being said, uh, I hope this video was informative, at least entertaining. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.